Hello everyone, welcome back for the fifth video tutorial. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to pass um, the graph data. First, we have to find the graph data and pass to the view, to the index views. And once the index view have the data, it should show the graphs in the views as well. Okay, so let's talk about part number one first, the part that allow us to extract the data. As you can see, this is the raw data but we still have to aggregate them by finding, uh, group them as the date, okay? And then find the summation total for each group. So in this case, each group will represent the date number, okay? So to do this, we're gonna go back to our um, index controller. The first part is done, we can find the results. The result will be used in the table view. But now we're gonna need another data set that we use for the graph. So in this case, you can see that set number one is already uh, provide uh, something that equivalent to this, similar to this, okay? The next step is we're gonna have to group them by date number and sum them up. So that means I can use the set number one again from here, okay? Set number one is when we find the duration of the time that you want from your data projection here. And now with the set, okay, step number 21st, we're going to need to make another query here and perform data projections, okay? So when you want to perform data projections, then we use dot select, okay? The rep hand size of the arrow function x represent the row from all objects from the collection. So it's going, it's going to loop and this function will be called each time it loops to each object or each row in data table. On the right hand side of so arrow function is going to be the new structure of the objects that will be copied into this list. Okay, so you can see that for the new structure for this, it's going to have two information including date and total. Now keep in mind that when you compare the groupings of the date, this is very crucial, very important. You can see that now I have the same date over here, although I have the same date, but I have different timestamp over here. So when we comparing these two data together, they will consider that these two are different group. So if you want to ignore the time, but just keep the data. That is why whenever you perform data projection here, I just want to select create a data and turn it into just the data stream. So the output of this will not contain the timestamps. It's going to sorry, it's not gonna contain the times, it's going to contain the date stamp only. Okay, and I rename it as the date. Now I also need to have the total. So you can see that now if you look at this carefully here along with this. So for example for 28 here. Okay, the first time when they finding this, they're gonna look at X, that X represent this row. Okay. And it's going to look at the card item. Um, the card ID can have more than one card item, so you can sum them up like what we did in the previous example. So the total will be belong to each card ID. Okay? And then I use it as a total. So the output of these operations is going to look like this. Okay, so we're gonna have the list of the group. So in this case, I assume that uh, we might have group number one for number 28 here with the total of 40s. Now, uh, the second group, you can see it's the set of two objects. The first group is the set of one object. Now for the second group, because it's contained the same date here, so they put it in the same group, okay? And they have different total over here. So let me go back here one more time. Okay, so we have uh, something similar to this. Now, <coughs> after this is done, we just have to group them by the date. So you can see that uh, the, the, the date from created date is become the date already. Okay, so we say, hey, we want to group this by this information. The output is, of course, is going to be this. Okay, now after the group, 
what we are interested in here is that we want to keep the date, but we want to sum the total together. So the first one have one object, so we don't need to worry about it. It's going to sum just one. But for the second group, it's going to sum two objects, and we got uh, this number together, 50 and 60, for example. So in order to sum for this, okay, so you need to have another projection. As I said, the first time we have the first projection that uh, um, rename the date so that we only have the date not including the time and we do the summation of the product price and QTYs of this reference we got total okay so the next and then before another projection we group them first and this is the output of this grouping operations now we do another projections we say hey the first one sum it please and give me the first object so the first object we have the date and the key is basically based on this information. And the total is what? The total is going to be um, this, okay? This row. The total will become the G represent this, okay? The first G represent this object, uh, represent this set. The second G represent this set. So you can see that now um, as they do, they, they say, okay, this is the original G here. Okay, the new one will become the date. Okay, the objects at the date and the key is the date itself. And the total is coming from summing of this set. Look at this, you know we only have one object. So it's sum total and see, sum total and we have 40 only. So they put 40 right here. Now for the second set, so for this projection again, so G now we move to the second set and then do the structure of the object. So we have the object structure here, the date. The date here will be equal to the key. The key is the date. So the data is coming from both of them, which is the same one. Okay, so we got this one. Um, the total itself now will be coming from uh, that G. That G represent this group and make summation of the total. Okay, so you can see that we have G's and then we have X, right? So G represent the whole group here. That X represent each object in this set. So when we say we want to sum that total, they're going to look up this and say, hey, I pick up 50, I pick up 60, and then add them together and then put it right here. Okay. So in this case, whenever you do some data aggregation like this, you can see that we always start with projection to find out only the structure that we need. And then we perform the group so that we have the group structure that look like this. Now, the, the goals of the group is normally is like finding the total of something, some field. So that's why we have another projections. And this is how we do it. And the output of this is going to be like this. Okay. Now, we cannot directly use the object structure on the graph. The graph doesn't like it. Okay, the graph loves something like this. For example, uh, the x data is going to be data on x axis. It's, it needs something like 04 to it, um, 2009. Uh, the second element, 04 to um, 2019, like this, for x data. Now for the y data, then it needs something like this. So it's going to be the set of um, 40 is the number so 40 is and 110 so this data will be used on x axis and this on the y axis okay so in order to turn our objects that have the following structure here okay into this structure how do we do this well we take the output of this operation the output of this operation is the data the data will have this output now we have to turn it into this format here so that's why we use the data and do the projection the first projection is just to pick up only the date information so they're gonna look at x x represent its object here so it take this number and then copy it into um, x data it take this number and copy it into the um, x data again so that uh, we got this number similar to this same thing for the second um, array here so we use the data we say projection could you please select only total so we select total 
from the first object here 40 and then put it as the first element for the um, y data here also they look at the second objects and look up so if we say look up total please and then they take 10 110 uh, and then put it into uh, y data as the second element now once this data is available then you can you have to because we cannot send the array directly to um, the client the client doesn't like it okay so in this case what we should do is if you want to send this to the client you're gonna need to turn this into string format first okay so we combine this like this okay using string joins and then we got x and y data and then we attach this view to view back x data and y data you can see that we do not put it as the third element um, terse information like x data here we do not do that okay we actually attach x data okay and y data to the view back so that we can reference view back later on now in this step I show you how to make okay um, the data that is for the graph as you can see inside the graph here um, okay it's gonna need x data which is the dead the dead and the dead is also need the y data which is the number number okay so now we send them the string array the string of the array for both of them under the name x data and y data now how to pick up this one in the client this is how we do it so if you open up index.cshtml one more time here we previously already told you that uh, in the table text okay this is how you populate the data from data model the data at data model is the reference of this guy the result okay but what about x data and y data okay so in that case if you move back to index here if you go up to um, move to the section script here so inside your view result view you can include the section okay add section scripts with s this is the uppercase letter as well inside here we put the script tag inside the script tag here um, I make decision to use jQuery to make dynamic contents okay you can use angular.js you can use vjs or any other framework that you like but I think for more students jQuery would be more easier for them so for jQuery we study this in data structure we know that in order to uh, connect the event when the documents of index here is load up in the view so for example when you refresh this it's going to return index.chstml and then when it's fully loaded what happened you can register the events okay by saying dollar sign document dot ladies and CB the CB function will get called and what we do is you can see that now I what I do what I do what I did is I uh, select I call function set up the picker this function what it does is if you go to function the picker here it's going to be over here so this function is it okay turn the standard okay one more time you can see that now I have two data picker that look um, you know additional to the standard HTML because I use a special library okay now if you look at the tag here uh, the start and end date tag is available in HTML portion at the top now um, compelling to the view up to the top we have title shopping cart we have a link this is the link we have a container that contain the chart we talk about that later but we also have another container this container that contain three different rows look at this we have row number I'm sorry three different columns column number one column number two and column number three the first column is housing as you can see just a standard input 
with this ID. The second column is also input. The third column is also a button. So together there are three columns and nothing much. And we know that if it is the input, Ajahn, it's going to be just a standard text. But now you have the calendar picker. How this is happen? It because I have to go to uh, the view import .cs .html. Um, No, sorry. Go to the shaded shaded folder here. Underscore layout .cs .html and .html. I have to include this special script right here. Okay, that inclusions will allow me to make standard input text to become the date time picker with this inclusion okay inside layout cs.html um, allow me to go back to this to index.html here one more time okay so I can turn this standard input into date time picker now to turn them into date time picker you have to remember the ID start date and end date here Okay, so what I do is uh, I have a function called setup date picker. So I find the to today value here, and this is how you turn a standard input text into the time picker, and that's the um, options. Okay, you can just keep using this option as well. Okay, uh, same thing for both of them. So the first one is start date ID and the second one is end date so in order to turn it into a special input that become the time picker this is the code for the first input the code for second input and now you got the time picker okay and every time when user select that the time picker here it's going to return your selection okay return your selection all right now um what is next? So this is that the time picker. The next step is what about the graph? As you can see, we return the view back, okay, for x data and y data. But we haven't done anything with this, okay? We just look at uh, the time picker first. Now, if you look at this carefully inside um, layout of CSS HTML, this is the place that you include your special library. Uh, I also include another special library from epic charts okay this is the libraries I'll uh, use this instead of chart.js because it's more elegant and more easier to use so from now on you can use these charts as well so after the inclusion of this what happened if you go back to your index.html okay after you set up your time picker already in this step okay the next step is we register the click function um, here when you user click on this okay this function will be call okay we talk about that later but now you can see that uh, this is how I reference to my view back data one more time when you pass the view back data over here you pad it like this okay the data that you got is in the string format of the array I said string format of the array okay now inside your index here to get it back during the startup of your documents this is the good time that you got the data we say add view back dot x data but uh, it is interesting to know that you have to turn this into the, the text as well so you need to you need to put either single code or double code in front of this and after it as well and once it's become the text okay we split it using comma and this one will become the array one more time first we got the array from here but we cannot pass data to travel to the network as the array format so we put it into strings of the array now to get the array back into their format here we have to perform it this way split it okay so we have the arrays of x and y what is next once you have x and y data then we are going to send this to information into this function called setup graph the setup graph will give us uh, the object variable that we use the in the following step okay but let let's take a look at the setup graph first now inside setup graph here um, this is the things that you have to set up you create the new objects 
the objects will have the following structure. It will have the marker information, the size of it, and the um, additional information to denote the size, the strokes, and um, also the series index. Okay, this one is the um, best practice that I use, so you can just keep using this structure as you like. Now the second piece of um, information and value is responsiveness. So if you put it this way, if you resize your web browser, okay, beyond 300, it's going to become responsive. If you reduce the size less than 300 pixel, will not be uh, responsive anymore. The reason for this is because we want to keep the original data like that, okay. Inside this object here, another information is the options. You can put the region as well. So my recommendation is just to keep using my um, set up here so you don't need to change okay uh, things that are interesting is about title so you can set up the title as well the alignments of your title you can set up the grid as you can see now I have the grid with the color so that now it show the grid with the ribbons rows like this okay so you can also use my setup like here aside from the grid Another one is the, the stroke, the stroke of the line, which is a straight straight line. And then um, data label, now I'm going to disable it. So I say enable equal to full. And the chart itself is going to be height equal to this. You can change the height as you like. The type of the graph or the chart is line graph. And the zoom is full. You can turn it by putting this as true. Now, after you set up chart, okay, um, the next step is you have to look at, Ajahn, we have um, X data and Y data. How do we put them in place? The X data will go to X axis object, okay? The type is the date time, so it's going to show us the date time as well. Um, for the Y axis, it's going to go to the series object here, okay? The name of this is going to be uh, the label, I put it desktop. So this is how you set up all the object requirements. So keep in mind that I think in your case, what you could do is you can keep everything as is, okay? But the only adjustment that you need is the egg axis. If you don't need the time tight, don't put it there, okay? Remove that highlight. Um, also for the stroke, you can set it up like this. Data label, you can turn it off. Um, chart, this is how you set up the size and also the type of your graph, okay? After the setup, you can see that the function return these options, okay? That option will be used right here, so it's returned the options. Now, this is actually the place that we create the, the chart objects. The chart object can be used right here to create the chart objects. We use new epic chart and then we put the option as the second input arguments. The first input parameter or the first input argument is going to be how do we reference to the graph, where we draw the graph. As you can see, the graph here is draw right here. Now inside this one, if you look at your HTML structure, it is contained within the div. The div has the ID equal to chart number one. So this way, okay, we say, Inside this chart number one, we want to draw the chart right here. And you can see you also have to put the chart as well in front of the chart name. Okay. And then you ask the chart to render. Render means can you please using my option here, uh, the option contain X and Y data. Could you please uh, draw the graph? And here we go. After this one, you got the graph. Okay, that explain my to um explanation about. Um, how do we draw the graph? Next step. So after you have the graph, you can see that whenever user select select a particular length like 28 to um, 30 here, the original data have five different rows. When I select, look at this carefully. When I select, okay. When I select, you can see that's the result. It doesn't have um, row number one anymore. Now you can see that um, in your in your file, um, this is the function that got registered whenever user click on that button. Okay, so 
what the function does is this it takes the data from input start date and input for date and um, end date sorry and then it's say okay I'm going to call this URL card index and then you can see that it combined the parameter d1 and d2 so that together you know at the output is going to be slash card slash index question mark d1 equal to the data from this selections uh, and and d2 okay equal to data from these selections and now to in order to uh, request the data from this URL then we say window location dot h left equal to use this URL and what it's going to do is it's going to go to this okay look at this carefully so together okay it's going to start with card and index and then what else the question mark the d1 equal to this data is coming from this selection and d2 is because of this line number here we connect with this and this data is coming from this selection okay and then they say okay go ahead and go to this controller okay go to this controller go to this action pass these informations it's going to say hey go ahead and call this for me please and um, the web application what it does is going to say okay you want to call me card they say okay who who is the one who is responsible for this controller which is card controller and it's going to call index action so it's going to go for the um, index action and as you can see in this case we pass parameter as well we pass um, these two data so these two data here will be passed inside the function index which is d1 and d2 and just like a regular call for index is going to first query um, all the roles and if they find out that this data d1 and d2 from here no longer empty so when it's no longer empty that means they are going to look up uh, create date one and that day two objects from these two string you know keep in mind that this one is passed as string cannot be directly used you have converted into date time objects later on and this is how you filter out objects only for this particular lynch and then it just continue to perform this okay continue to perform data selection to make graph data and then return the index and the result what it does is going to op open up this this one for you okay and go from there all right so this is the video that explain my um, application here so normally the controller has two part the part that take the query and then return the view model the view model we populate it using add for each okay it's in the table tag we can also have the x and y data x and y data is coming from the second query and when we pass it it's going to pass through the um over here all right inside normally inside what inside whenever the document is fully loaded the cb got call this is the good time that we take the data data is in string format so we need to convert it back into the array after you got this to array we feed it into this function call the output of this will be used to display the data in this object okay and this is actual function that display the data again when whenever user select these two um, in total here user click select what happened well it does the same thing but this time it's going to also request that URL along with this data okay and it's going to say hey okay um, I'm going to need your help for looking up the index one more time so it's going to go to the index but this time is also take d1 and d2 and give us two things the thing for the table and the thing for the graph and those data also conform to this selection as well okay I think uh, this is all for this video tutorial I'll see you on the next video thank you